Jesus came after 4,000 years for the number of deliverance to set us free. Amen. Hallelujah. From darkness, from bondage. He has quickened us by the power, hallelujah, of his word. So they put a big stone in there. And Pilate said to them, you are the God. Go your way and make it secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, seeing the stone and setting the guard. Now after the Sabbath, the first day of the week, in the beginning of the new dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb, and behold, there was an earth, great earthquake. Now Matthew says here, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. Amen. So we know that the angel came and rolled away in the stone and Jesus was risen. He had the power to give, to lay down his life and then to take it back. Let me read the last scripture in the book of Luke 24. So they tried to seal him in. They could not believe. But on the third day, no stone could hold him. No grave could hold him. He came out from the dead. Praise God. During those three days, who knows where Jesus went? He went to preach to the souls that were in prison that did not believe in the time of Noah. He was preaching to them. And he went there. Hallelujah. And knocked on the door where Abraham was held captive with Moses and all of them and opened the door and said, you are free. It's another day. It is Easter. You are free to go. He opened the door and set the captive free. For he came to set the captive free. And the dead in Christ the saint, they were risen. Oh, praise God. And they walked into the city. But there was another door. Hallelujah. Where the devil was sitting there. He made a big mistake by nailing Jesus on the cross. He made a big mistake. He did not know by nailing him on the cross. He came to take away our sins. He came to take us away from bondage. So he made a great mistake. He was thinking this was Elijah. He was thinking this was Moses. He said, if that be the son of God, he does not believe the word. He's a doubter. He doubted the word of God. So he was thinking, this was just an ordinary prophet. He did not believe Jesus Christ is God. Remember the saying, we stole you for a blasphemy because you a man, you call yourself God. They could not believe that he was God in human flesh. And the devil, he did not believe. So they hang him on that cross. But he went there. Hallelujah. In hell. And he knocked on that door. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hallelujah. And when he opened the door. Praise God. He was there. The mighty conqueror. He was there. Christ. The Lord Jesus. He grabbed the key from Lucifer. He grabbed the key from Satan. He said, devil, give me the keys. Praise God. That's why when John saw him on the Isle of Patmos, hallelujah, John said, when I saw him, I fell at his feet like dead, and he laid his right hand unto me, and he said, fear not, John. Fear not. I was dead, but now I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and hell. And then somebody shout, Jesus, he has the keys of death. And Paul said, oh, death, where's your power? Where is your sting? Don't be afraid of those who can kill the body. Be afraid of one who can kill your soul. Amen. Don't be afraid. If you die in a body, you just go to another place. You just go to another dimension. You go, if you're a Christian, to the sixth dimension. Don't be afraid. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Somebody shout. Amen. Amen. 
He has the keys of hell. So the devil does not have the keys to his own house. Did you hear what I said? The devil does not have the keys to his own house. Amen. He's got the keys. Oh, praise God. I want to read Luke 24. It says this, Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, there and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spice which they had prepared. Hallelujah. Who says the women, they are not used by God. They are used by God. Notice here, they were the first to witness, to be a witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. The women, which is the type of the church. Amen. The disciples did not even believe when the women came and said, He is risen. We saw the Lord. He appeared to women. Oh, praise God. Mighty women of value. They went there bringing spice. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. Because he has risen and the tomb was empty. That's the only tomb that's, that's empty. Oh, praise God, check the history. All the tombs are filled with bone, but the tomb of Jesus is empty today. The tombs of the prophet are filled with bones, but the tomb of Jesus is empty today. Praise God, the only tomb that's empty is the tomb of Jesus Christ. He is the Lord. Hmm. And it, it happened. As they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garment. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, listen to this, why do you seek the living among the dead? Hallelujah! Why do you seek the living? Why are you seeking him who is alive among the dead? They say, he is not here. He is risen. Praise God. Jesus is not among the dead. Are you dead this afternoon? He does not dwell among the dead. He is among the living. He is alive forevermore. Praise God. If you are dead spiritually this afternoon, he's more than ever to restore you back to life. While you seek Jesus among the dead, why do you seek Jesus among the priests and dog by man speaking? In religion, he's not there. Hallelujah. In man speaking, he's not there. In man's dogma, he's not there. For Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word is God. He is in his word. He's alive. Why do you seek the living God? Among the dead. So Easter. <coughs> Easter. What is the meaning of Easter to you today? Is it Easter bunny? Easter candy? Easter flower that you bring on the pulpit? The flower that you need to bring on the pulpit is yourself. Amen. You are the true flower that Jesus saw on the ground and he wants to water you with his word and fill you with the Holy Spirit. He wants you at the altar. The Easter flower is you. Amen. Amen. We see here, they put the cross. They put all those things. Hallelujah. Amen. Go to the churches. They do all those things. But Easter is the resurrection. Is the restoration. You were dead. Hallelujah. You were walking in sin and darkness. You were away in slavery. But you, the Bible says, he has quickened. Amen. Amen. Ma. The proof of the resurrection is an empty tomb. Amen. 
that's the proof of the resurrection is an empty tomb. Did you hear this? Amen. If there's no resurrection, then we are preaching in vain. If Jesus did not rise again, in vain we are coming to church. Amen. Amen. If Jesus was not risen, there would be no rapture. Amen. If Jesus was not risen, I'm telling you, the Bible is a lie. We are standing here in vain, but he is risen. And then we know that we know that we know this is the truth. The proof of the resurrection is the empty tomb. What is the proof of resurrection for you? What is the proof that Jesus has risen? It's because you are no longer the person you used to be. It's a change in your life. That's the proof that Jesus is risen. And you have risen with him. He has given you another life, a new life. Amen. 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 Then you can say, truly Jesus is risen. Because I'm no longer, it's not I who live anymore. But God who lives in me. He that is in you. 1 John 4 verse 4. is greater than he who is in the world. He that is in you. The almighty God by the Holy Spirit in you. You are a new creation. You are a new person. The old of things are passed away and now all things are made new. That's the proof of the resurrection because you're made new. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Mm. We need an Easter in this church. Eh? Well, people don't come late anymore. Where well, people miss church anymore? Where well, people walk with a risen Christ? They know that they know that they know. It's not just religion. It's not just church. But the risen Christ lives in them. Amen. We need an Easter. You need an Easter in your life. We need an Easter in the church. We need an Easter in the body of Christ. Amen. Cast away all the forms of religion. Amen. And become the word. Because Jesus is coming to take the word. You must become the word. Amen. The Bible says, to those who received him, he has given power to become the sons of God. Now, that day, early in the morning, we can see there was a sunrise, S-U-N, the natural sun. Amen. Amen. Why was there a sunrise? The sun brings life to the natural seeds. Is that true? Let me read you something. Now the sun and its rising of the sun. Now if you go, I want Brother Brilliant to come and read Genesis chapter 1. If you go in the beginning. Hallelujah. The Bible says, in the beginning God said, let there be light. Amen. There was darkness. I want him to come and read it. It's a mystery. What happened on that Easter morning? There was a time when the world was lying in utter darkness. Just like the spiritual world was in darkness. The Bible says when Jesus appeared, those who sat in darkness, they saw a great light. When Jesus appeared on the scene, the entire world was covered with darkness. Amen. He was the only light. He was the true light that came. Amen. He says this. In the beginning, the earth was there without form and void. Read it, brother. Genesis 1, verse 1 to 3. Listen carefully. In the beginning, God created. Au commencement, Dieu créa le ciel et la terre, et la terre était sans forme et vide. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. Les ténèbres étaient au, étaient au dessus. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Et l'esprit du Seigneur se mouvait au dessus des eaux. And God said, "Let there be light," and there was light. Et Dieu dit, "Qu'il y ait la lumière," et il y eut la lumière. Let's stop there. Let there be light, and there was light. The light was to come to bring life to the sea. 
because the seed were under the earth, the natural seed. So that light was coming to give life to the seed. Amen? Amen. What light was it? Because the sun, S-U-N, was created on the fourth day. Read your Bible. Brother I want you to still be here. Maybe grab a chair. We see that the, <laughs> the natural sun was created on the fourth day. Amen. How many Bible readers in here? So what light? When he said, let there be light, what was the light? Oh, praise God. Amen. It was laying there in a dark, dismal, gloomy atmosphere. And the Spirit of God moved upon the water and said, let there be light. God had a reason to do that. For down beneath the water, there was seed that he had planted, the natural seed. And he had to have sunlight to make it live. And the first light that was ever given to the earth was God's spoken word. Amen. Amen. David said, Oh Lord, thy word is a light unto my path. Amen. And a lamp unto my feet. Is that true? The word of God is the light. Do you know in eternity the S-U-N shall be no more? When John looked at the city, he said there was no more sun. There was no more sea, no more moon, no more star. These are temporal things that God put there to rule the day and the night for a season. But at the end time, when eternity began, the sun will disappear. Amen. And then science is showing that in the sun you have gases, helium, hydrogen, all those things. They will wear out. Amen. If you read the book of Revelation, chapter 6, you see how the sun became red and the moon became dark. All those, hallelujah, will go away. All those stars. Amen. But you know without the sun, there's no life. If you take away the sun, no matter the power of the United States of America, if you take the S-U-N away, if God said, let's see who is powerful, and drives the sun away for one year, what will become to the earth? A cold place. Amen? Do you know that's why in other planets there's no life? They try to find life. <laughs> but the earth is at the exact distance from the S-U-N, from the sun, so that we can have life here. If we were closer to the sun, we will burn. Amen. That's why also the sun is turned, the earth is turning around. Because if it doesn't turn, one part will be in the light, the other part in the dark. People will die. Amen. So it's turning around at exact position from the sun here so that it's not too hot. Just imagine 400 degrees will be burning. We're hungry, we cannot even take it. So you have to acknowledge there is a God. The universe is designed by God. It's not an accident. Amen. There are many galaxies. And every galaxy has a sun. The Andromeda galaxy has a sun. We are in a Milky Way galaxy. And without the sun that we have, all the planet turning around the sun, we will die. Do you believe that? Amen. That we in the sun? Amen. In the sun we even have the vitamin D. If you don't have that, you cannot function. If you don't have vitamin D in your bones, in your body, you're going to get sick. So we need the sun. We need the sun. The nature needs the sun. That's the natural sun. So you see here in the spiritual, that's the sun, S-O-N, Christ. The Bible says, he who has the sun has life. He who does not have the sun does not have life. Amen. Why? Because life is in the sun, S-O-N, just like the S-U-N. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. From that sun, we get life. Amen. From the light that comes from the sun. Oh, we need it today. Oh, praise God. So we see here, God said, let there be light in the new Jerusalem. The sun is not, and the moon is not. Where is the light coming from? The Bible said the lamp 
shall be the light. Do you mean the land will have enough light for the entire world? Read the twist, 1 Timothy 6, 16. Oh, God is wonderful, isn't he? He's the greatest scientist there is. Hallelujah, look at your body. Science trying to study your body, they can't even figure out. <laughs> What's going on? They take years and years, generation after generation. You ask them, do you master the human body? No. MDD and PhD and LDD. Oh my, they're confused. But God is not confused. When he performed a surgery in a garden of Eden, he did not need laser light or anything. He just put Adam to sleep. Hallelujah. And he opened here by the spoken word. And he took Eve. Hallelujah. And closed the womb. There was no anesthesia. It was the power of the living God. The great physician. The great surgeon. If he's able to open Adam and close him back and bring him to life. What about you? You say I'm sick. There's no sickness can stand in the presence of Jesus. If you can believe that see the glory of the living God. Amen. Oh, he's wonderful. Amen. 1 Timothy 6.16 Who only have mortality working in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power for everlasting. Amen. He's talking about Christ, who only has immortality. Who? Christ, who dwell in the light that no man can approach. Amen. So that light, when the sun is gone, amen. Just that light is able to sustain the entire cosmos. It's the light of the living God. Amen. Amen. Praise God when you see an angel appear to you. The room is lighted. They are in another body. We're going to be in glorified bodies. Praise God. Amen. But the body in which the Lord is, the light is stronger than the sun when it shines at noon. You cannot even look in his face. Oh, praise God. There's energy, supernatural energy of the power of the Holy Spirit coming out of his body. That's why when John saw him, oh, he felt like dead, had too much energy. Oh my, somebody shout. Listen, the first light was the spoken word of God. Let there be light. Amen. It was not the S word. The first light that ever struck the earth was God's spoken word. But now listen to this. When Jesus died, when he rose again, the natural sun was rising to give life to the natural sea. But Jesus was the sun that was rising to give life to the spiritual seed. Hallelujah. Do you know you are a seed? The Bible says in the book of Matthew 13, a sower went to sow. The son of man. Amen? In the day, he began to sow seed. And the Bible said, those are the sons of God. And the enemy came by night and sow another seed. Amen? The children of the evil one. Just read your Bible. So we know they are the seed of God, the sons of God. How do we know they are the son of God? Because when they see the light, they come to light just like the Samaritan woman. She was not a saint. Amen. Amen. When he went to the Pharisee, the holy Pharisee, they could not receive him. The Bible says he came to his own and his own rejected him. But that little Samaritan woman met with Jesus. He began to talk with her, to contact her spirit. Say, give me some water. Say, oh, sir, you are a Jew. We are Samaritan. We don't worship together. You are a Pentecostal. We are Baptist. We are this and this denomination. We don't worship together. 
Hallelujah. She did not have an idea. But this was the word. This was different. This was not the Jews. This was God in human flesh. Amen. She said, if you knew the person talking to you now, you asked me for water. She was shocked. You have nothing in your hand. How are you going to draw that water? Amen. Amen. He said, for the water that I will give you, you shall not thirst anymore. If you seek Jesus, if you receive Jesus in your life, he shall quench your thirst. He is the first quencher. Hallelujah. He will extinguish your thirst. You're thirsting no more. You are thirsting in your life because, hallelujah, there's water somewhere. You cannot thirst if there's no water. Before you thirst, there had to be water somewhere. Before there was the fish, there was water. Praise God, somebody shout. Amen. That's why you're thirsting this morning. This afternoon, because he's more than ever, he's the water of life. Give me that water. And he said, Go call your husband. Hmm. Now, what a change. Amen. Say, I have no husband. Wow. So, is Jesus lying? Go call your husband. He said, I have none. Say, You're right. You have had five. Amen. They were not your husband. Now you have one, six one. He's not your husband. You've been living from boyfriend to boyfriend. But yes, the true husband standing here. Amen. He's the true bridegroom. He's the true husband. Jesus Christ. Amen. Before you marry in the flesh, first you have to marry Jesus. Amen. Then your marriage in the flesh will work. Amen. You need to be married spiritually with Jesus first. Then you can marry on the earth. Amen. When she heard the word, she said, Sir, I perceive you a prophet. When the Pharisee heard the word, they said, He's a demon. He's a witch. That's Belzebub. But when she heard the word, she said, Sir, you are a prophet. And she began to testify. Come and see a man. He had told me all my life, isn't he the Messiah? We, she was waiting for the Messiah. She was a daughter of Abraham, just like Rahab. Amen? Amen. The natural seed, just in the ground. Here, so we see the spiritual seed. You and I, walking in darkness. But God, he has come to bring us life. The first time that the sun rose in Genesis, it was bringing a message that there will be upon the earth mortal life. Amen? The natural seed. But this time, when the sun arose, there was a dual sun rising. One, the natural sun, and then the spiritual sun, another sun rising. It was not only the S-man rising, it was the S-O-N. He had risen, risen to bring eternal life to all God's promised seed, you and I. That's the meaning of Easter. He came to bring eternal life to you. He came to say, Shalom, 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 my children. Praise God. Amen. Now watch this. He came. Do you know Jesus came to die for the sons of God? Watch this. To give life to all God's promised seed that by foreknowledge is seen laying upon the earth. See, God is omniscient. Amen. Do you know when Jesus rose, your body was laying on the earth? Your body came from the earth. When he got picked up Adam's body from the earth, your body was laying on the earth and your soul in the heaven. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Your body on the earth. Amen. The natural son came to give life to your body, laying on the earth. But your soul over there was in heaven, in the hand of God. Amen. When the two time was come for you to be manifest, praise God, that soul just came in there, in that body. Praise God. You are a spirit and God put you in the body to be tested. That's why you walked away. But now he has called you to give you eternal life. He known you. He told Jeremiah before.
before you were formed, I know you. So God is omniscient, amen? He knows everything. He knows exactly who will be saved, who will accept him, and who will not. Amen. That's omniscience, amen? amen? Look at this. No more could the bodily life live back there at the beginning without the S-U-N to bring life. No more than today, when the sons of God is upon the earth, it takes the S-O-N light to bring them to eternal life. He's chosen the ones that he knew before the foundation of the world. He has chosen them in himself before the foundation of the world. You say, Pastor, give me a scripture. Revelation 38. That he has chosen you before the foundation of the world. Amen. You are not here by accident. You are not in church by accident. You don't believe the word of God by accident. You are a son, a daughter of the living God. That's why the first time you heard the word of the living God, you could not sleep anymore. You could not rest. Something began to shake in you. You say, that's right. That's right. I knew that. Something deep calling into the deep. Amen. Revelation 13, 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are now written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, who? The beast. Why? Because their names were not written in the Lamb's book of life from the foundation of the world. When were your name written in a book? From the beginning. When you came to church? When you met an evangelist, say, from the foundation of the world, your name were written. He knew exactly who would believe. Amen. And he put your name on his book. Hallelujah. And the memory of God is everlasting. And he knows exactly what time you will come upon the earth and you will believe his word. You will never worship the beast because your name was written before the foundation of the world in God's Lamb's book. You were in God's mind as a believer. Now you are manifest. Hallelujah. Read Ephesians 1. Oh my, all the planets need the S-U-N. We need, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, life is in the sun. Oh my. Ephesians 1 from 4 to 5. Listen carefully. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Let's stop there. He has chosen a company. He has chosen us. When? Before the foundation of the world. When did God choose you? Before the foundation of the world. Why? To be holy. Amen. Because the Bible says those that he has foreknown, he has called. Romans chapter 8. Those whom he has foreknown, he has called. Amen. That's what Jesus told the disciples. It's not you who chose me, but I have chosen you, yet one of you is a devil. Amen. Amen. One of you is the son of perdition, but I've chosen you. It's like when the fisherman goes to the sea, he casts the net, and everything comes in the net. Amen. Amen. Just like the internet catches everything. It's a devil's net. Amen. Oh, the serpent, the scorpion in our net. <laughs> Be careful with the internet. But now the fishermen cast the net, the serpent, the scorpion, the frogs, rawr, rawr, rawr. they all come in our net. But the fishermen just want the fish. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. He does not need the frog. Amen. Amen. Now you say, He's calling me a frog. <laughs> No, I didn't. Amen. Who 
told him you were frog. You should say out of the fish. Amen? The fish are like, just eat the fish. So what does he do? He takes the net. They were all caught. Amen? They were all in the net. They came to a certain point. They came out of the water, justified. They came to a certain point with the fishermen. Then they begin to, begin to sort, sorting, and taking the frog aside, the scorpion, the serpent aside, and just take the fish, the good fish, not the rotten fish. Amen. Amen. And they begin to put them aside. They begin to, did they become fish in the net? They were fish before they got into the net. Amen. Amen. The nature was the fish. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise God. So the kingdom of God is like a net that's cast in the world, catching all kinds of things. But he is looking for a fish. That's why Jesus looked at Peter and said, I'll make you fishes of men. Oh, praise God. Amen. Amen. So he has ordained us before the foundation of the world in him to be what? Holy. So, if God has known you, he calls you. How do you know? It's a revelation. Amen. It's a person. God reveals to you, you are my son. Just like he revealed Abel, the sacrifice is blood. The kingdom of God works by faith. And faith is a revelation. Amen. I know I'm going into the rapture. I know I'm a child of God. Amen. But look at you. You are stealing some eggs. Oh, if I live today, it's not I who live anymore. It's Christ in me. Hallelujah. I'm a new creation. Oh, praise God. Somebody shout. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So when he calls you, he justifies you. Amen. Amen. Justification means like you never sinned before. You are a virgin. The wise virgin. Isn't that true? The Bible calls the bride the wise virgin. They have no mistake, no spot. When he calls you, he justifies you. When God forgives you, it's not like man. When a man forgives you, tomorrow he comes back with a stick. <laughs> Say, I forgave you years ago. But I still remember. So he comes and beat you with a stick. Amen. If the man control the kingdom of heaven, he will cast you out. The minute you make a mistake, he says, scratching your name, scratch. You come again and say, please, I repent. Yes, 10,000, put back. Make no mistake, scratch. You cannot be saved today, lost tomorrow, saved today, lost tomorrow. That's not the kingdom of God. Praise God. When he has known you, he calls you, he justifies you. After justification, he begins to cleanse you. He begins to cleanse you. He begins to cleanse you by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we need the power, the dynamic of the Holy Spirit in the church today. We don't need a dead church. We don't need a dead Christian. We need the power of the Holy Spirit, people who walk in with God, people becoming one with the word of the living God that can say, it is written, it is written, it is written. When the devil comes, you say, it is written, devil, it is written. The word of God is fire. The word of God is powerful. No demonic power can stand the word of the living God. How shall I overcome by the word of the living God? Just speak the word. Hallelujah. And watch the Red Sea begin to open. Watch the Jordan begin to open. And you can go and take Jericho. You can go and take your promised land for every place where the soul of your foot shall tread upon that he has already given to you. You say, but there's giant over there. I don't care about giant or oh, press God. I don't care about any giant. If God says so, that settles it. I have to close. But he calls you, sanctifies you. Then he fills you with the Holy Spirit. Until when? The true Easter seal is the seal of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, they put the seal on his tomb. 
Oh my. But the true Easter seal is when God sends you with the Holy Spirit. Gentlemen, touch. Touch not my anointed said alone. And to my prophet no harm. For one believer, God can destroy the entire United States. For one believer, they are precious in the eyes of God. Amen. You are precious. You should be walking different. Amen. amen. You are not just amen. You are sons and daughters of the living God. He is risen. Hallelujah. So he wants you to rise and shine for your light has come. Though thick darkness covered the earth, Isaiah 60, but upon you he has risen. Amen. And he fills you. And he seals you. He has chosen you before the foundation of the world. We are going to close. So the church needs the dynamic. If you have a car, what do you need for the car to start? You say, gasoline. The musician can come. If you have gas in your car, that's all you need? No, you can have gas. You look in there, there's gas. A full tank, but your car is not driving. What's wrong? You need a spark. You need some lightning. Amen. In that car, run to crank it, to start. Praise God. You don't just need a gasoline. You need the mechanic. Gasoline is the mechanic. Like the word of God is the mechanic. Amen. Anybody can quote the word. The Bible says, no man can say Jesus is the Christ if not by the Holy Spirit. Amen. You need the dynamic which is the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what the church was lacking. You know the disciples, they went and tried to cast out the devil. They said, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus who just went to the mountain, come out. In the name of Jesus, who went with John, Peter, and James praying. But we are here, the disciples. We cast you out. It was the demon of epilepsy. Say, come out, come out, come out. And the demon was laughing. There was no spark. There was no power. And they said, why couldn't we cast it out? Say, because of no faith. But when the Son, Jesus, was risen, on Easter morning, 50 days after, on the day of Pentecost, it was Jubilee for the church. Oh, praise God. They were sitting in the upper room. Hallelujah. In one mind, one accord, they were waiting for the promise from on high. He said, wait in Jerusalem. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And they were waiting. All of a sudden, hallelujah, the heavens opened and there was a wind like a mighty rushing wind, hallelujah. It was not a natural wind, it was the wind of the Holy Spirit. And it came upon them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and they received power to cast out demons. The dynamic came upon the church, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Let's all stand. Let's sing, he's alive. Oh my, he's alive today. He is risen. Today is your Easter. It's your resurrection. It's a new beginning. Praise God. No sickness, no demon can touch you. You just need to run in Christ. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus.
should come after that and pray for the word that we have heard and for the offering. Then the song leader will take the service. God bless you. Happy Easter. We're having a little reception at our house. You are welcome to come and dine with us. Praise the Lord.